What's going on YouTube? All right, so year end, I basically take all the tools that I've been using for the past couple job sites, collect them up, and then just do maintenance, check them, see what I'm missing, see if there's anything wrong with them. There's a couple tools that are broken. There's some of the tools that are not broken, but missing pieces and stuff like that. And then obviously more, more than anything, just inventory, see what I need to buy, see what I need to sell, because there's tools that I've been selling in the past couple months that I just don't, don't ever use, so. Yeah, let's get into it. I'm just gonna give you guys a little rundown of the tools we've been using in the last couple job sites. So for 2023, these are the tools we've been using the most. All right, so these are the tools that, you know, we get out of the tool trailer. These are the things we've been using the most, not all the tools obviously but these are the tools that we've been using and this is the this is what we use on a, a job basis and i would say i can pretty much run my entire business with just these tools nice to have some other stuff too but i mean come on like there's there's some there's some money here in tools i'm not going to go through everything like obviously my hand tools over there we already have a bunch of videos on those things so let's just get right into it uh the tools these are all the tools that i use to make money period in the, in the contracting field i would say uh mx fuel line yeah they're expensive but the jackhammer, the cutoff saw, absolutely need them in a residential environment because of the no gas cordless operations. It's a nice plus, but you need electric. You don't need gas. So I would highly recommend if you guys are in it uh, for the long haul, look at that. I mean, it, it saves me a lot of time. Plus, it's a lot of headaches because my subcontractors, plumbers, and even electricians and HVAC guys, Start, they, you know, they hear who's going to cut up the concrete, who's going to do this, do you want us to do this, we got to charge extra. No problem, I already charged the customer extra, but I have the tools to do it. It's just super convenient, plus it's a headache for when a plumber's like, well, we need these, this cut back another four inches and we don't, we don't have the time. It saves me a bunch of time rescheduling subcontractors and everything on site to just to do it myself. Not going to lie, it's just, it's a necessity to have the tools because sometimes subcontractors just, they drop the ball sometimes. So I uh, will say with the uh, cutoff saw, the Milwaukee MX Fuel Cutoff Saw, I would say the, the the tank that goes with it or can go with it is a definite must just to keep it cordless, not hoseless of course, but cordless and super con, you know super portable. I can just bring this into wherever I need to and be done with it. Just make my cuts and be done and clean up and we're we're on our way to the next job site or you know I don't have to hear you know a plumber crying about something. So going into the next one vacuums these little wet dry vacuums are fantastic you can tell because i have two of them the batteries get stuck inside kind of quite a bit that's kind of a, a milwaukee thing they should probably fix but these little hundred dollar eighty dollar wet dry vacs are fantastic i think this is like 2.1 gallons or whatever it is fantastic i would highly recommend them the hoses are a little weak you can see like the the sides kind of crack and then obviously the fronts they they don't last long. but highly recommend next we'll be going into an oscillating tool I have three of these DeWalt DCS 355. I do like the no tool blade change. That is fantastic. That's actually why I think it's probably the best oscillating tool on the market. And the fact it's got a little paddle. These things just work. They're fantastic. I don't see any reason to get rid of them. I mean, I know I, I'm getting rid of my DeWalt tools, but man, these things are awesome. I can just keep a small battery on the new tool trailer, a charger, and be able to charge a couple of these batteries up but these things are fantastic i absolutely love them next obviously paint you know nine inch roller you know i use a little small little four foot slash two foot uh paint pole we got four foot we have them all up to like i think 12 foot highly recommend you guys need them if you do any kind of contracting work you're going to do some drywall work and you're going to do some painting it's just it's inevitable because it's just not if i want to call my painter back it's just a bunch of paint you know or my drywall guys we got back into the drywall because it's just sometimes my guys hit something we need to patch it up real quick and I don't want to pay my you know drywall sub his minimum price of like three four five hundred bucks to come and do a small little patch we'll just take care of it ourselves plus we'll get into bigger work and just take care of it do it in-house highly recommend level five tools these are their skin blades uh, they are fantastic they're, I mean their tools are great I know they're not made in America or some of them are not made in America but these things are fantastic I got the aluminum I think this is a 10 inch one. We got the 18 and then we've got the 24 and I think I got a 36 one too as well as skimming blades. Fantastic. I would highly recommend level five tools. A little pricey, but they, they are professional grade for sure. I cannot say enough good things about my SDS uh, rotary hammer. If you don't have one of these, I don't care what brand it is, get it, period. These things are fantastic. 
I never use my hammer drill when I have this thing for going through masonry or concrete. I just, I bring this out. It just makes mincemeat of it, period. Get yourself one. If you do any kind of drilling into any kind of masonry or concrete, it's, it's a must for sure. You got your D-handle jigsaw. That goes without saying. We use that a lot. Staple uh, M12 staple gun. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to lie. It's <laughs> I can use a regular staple gun, but having an M12 battery, it's just nice. It's so convenient. I just use some of my Home Depot perks and get it for free or really, really discounted rate. I would highly recommend getting that as well, too. Already know about the Makita drywall cutoff. This is, I think, part number, uh, let's see here, XDS01 right there. This thing, I had to rebuy this not too long ago. Uh, yeah, because if you're cutting out any kind of drywall, doing any kind of patches or anything like this, this thing is awesome. I sold my last one because I didn't think I was, I thought I was out of the drywall business. Uh, turns out I'm not. So <laughs> I'll buy it again. You guys can see. And you can adjust the blade height for 5 8 or whatever kind of, whatever you're trying to get through on drywall. But man, let me tell you, this thing is epic. Epic. Hammer, of course, demo tools, uh, Saza. These go without saying. Mixer, my, my Milwaukee. This is actually, let's see, part number uh, 2810. And this is my mixer because, you know, mixing paints, drywall mud, really pretty much anything. This actually is fantastic. I'm not going to lie. This is one of my go-to things. I'm like, yeah, we'll just mix it up real quick. Makes for a better product, better uh, service to the customer. And this has got some torque behind it for sure. So recommend that. Not, not a have-to tool, obviously, but it's definitely... I mean, once you have it, you just like you just go right to it, mix it up, done, done, and done. So, and I would say besides the MX Fuel, like my laser, let's see if I got can get this in the this laser with the pole, the pole we've had it for about a month now. I want to say, and it's an absolute game changer. This three plane laser from Milwaukee is, I think, I would call it one of the best ones on the market, just because well, it's M12 for sure, and battery life. Even though I got a six amp hour battery on it right now, this thing is awesome. Um, my subs want to buy it for me. Uh, they want to buy one. Like, they, you know, they asked me for it. it. I can tell when a tool is like super awesome, super valuable when, you know, your subcontractors are like, wow, this is awesome. And like, but again, they have their own tools and everything like that too. But yes, three plane laser. This is, uh, what is this? Part number 3632. And I would definitely, if this, most of these tools, if they, if I lost them or, you know, somebody stole them or whatever, they broke, I have to go buy them. This laser, even though it's expensive, I think it's over 600 bucks for this entire kit. Probably, I think probably close to 800 with the pole and everything like that too. But man, you got to have it. And this thing makes, this makes life so much easier. Tile work, anything, framing. I know you don't need it. You know, you can do it without it. There's ways of doing it without it, but this is a cheat code. An absolute cheat code pays for itself probably in the first one or two jobs. And then basically it's free. You get the use of it for the rest of the time. No problems with it. Had absolutely no, no, nothing wrong with this thing. You just got to clean it up a little bit. But, you know, we are a boots on the ground kind of contractor. So uh, we we get our tools dirty, period. So basically, let's go to the left over here. That's on that table. But over here, again, a couple things. I'm missing some nailers. This is These are pretty much the nailers we use. I've got two framing nailers. I've got three or two, I think two, 18 gauge. These are my backups. That's why they look new. I don't use them until I absolutely need them. And I did find my other uh, nailers. They are actually on a customer's house that I forgot that I let them borrow it, so I gotta go get them. But 16 gauge, I've got 15. We've got a pin nailer, we've got other things here, but this is why I'm doing this is so I can actually kind of inventory stuff, see what I'm missing, see where it's at. And if you need to buy stuff, it, we, we can do it. I, I'm a Kita 8.5, is need some TLC over there, but we'll get there. Lights, uh, I got my, all my all lights and stuff, all the tools are on the job site. I got my, my rocket towers, but I do have other lights too. You know, flashlights, and just light. You need light, period. And obviously, everything here you see is cordless because I like not having extension cords on the job site. I'll go into obviously me using the total station has been epic. This thing I'll never get rid of. This thing is awesome. 150% would highly recommend if you guys are doing any kind of long form cutting durations. If you're on a job site more than two days, I would say it's worth it to set this baby up, get it going, workstation. You got crazy storage underneath there for everything. You can see I'm using it as a, basically a, um, a tool storage so I can kind of do inventory here. So highly recommend the Polk Miter Station. Definitely build it. Takes some time. Takes probably eight, nine hours to actually build it out the way you want to. And I have it built and set for my 12-inch Makita 40 volt. This thing is obviously great. No problems whatsoever. Capacity is fantastic. 
Uh, this thing, it doesn't eat batteries or anything like that. I will say my Makita XGT, let's see, where is it at over here? I think it's over, you guys can see it right there. The the XGT Bluetooth vacuum, that broke. I'm sending it in to re get repaired. It does not turn on. So that sucks, but it's no issue for me. I've known it's, it's broken for a little bit, so I'll get another one. But it's expensive. Those, those vacuums are above 600 bucks for those, so I will be sending that in to get fixed. That's one casualty for this year. The saw... I mean, both saws are great. I do like this one. I have no regrets about selling my 36 volt Makita for this one because of the shadow line. Fantastic. Get your guys XGT saws. Makita in general make very high quality uh, carpentry tools, including miter saws are probably one of the best on the market, period. Better than Milwaukee. You know, I'm not brand loyal. I just, you know, buy the best tool that I can. And I want to make sure that most all the things is going to be the red or the, I guess, Makita blue or Makita turquoise, whatever you want to call it. So... I do have both my saws right here, eight and a half and the 12 inch. I do use the eight and a half, probably 70% more than I do with like, so it's 70, 30 for the 12 inch to the eight and a half inch, just because it's so portable. Set it up real quick. Boom. You're cutting a lot of my jobs. I don't need to frame an entire house. I just need to make probably between 15 to 40 cuts. And then that's where the eight and a half comes in. Fantastic. No problems with this whatsoever. I was letting one of my subs use it. He had some, some, some court kickback or something like that. So it bent the fence right here. So we got to get another fence. That one piece right here, you can see it's missing. I know where that's at, but this is why I do this. Set everything up. Okay, I'm missing this. This is what's going on over here. So I can kind of source it and find out where I have it. I do have that. I just, it's not right here. It's on a, oh, I think it's, it's in my other vehicle there. So yeah, the Bosch miter station, I guess you want to call it miter stand. Fantastic. It's worked out great. This thing is super light, super portable. And it's been working fantastic. It's all metal, so that's great. It's nothing, not much as plastic except for maybe the, um, the I don't want to call it these little twisty little, uh, I forget what those little locking mechanism, I guess you want to call it. So I'm having a brain fart. So yeah, Bosch is fantastic. I would highly recommend this. My, I don't have any other Bosch stuff ever. I know this is the only thing I've ever bought from Bosch and it's, it's working out great. I have nothing bad to say about it, bar none. The Makita in general, all the XGT tools like the grinder, the drill, the blower. You guys can see the blower right there. Uh, fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, battery power is great. No failures except for the damn vacuum. Right. Let's go. Let's point it out over there too. Right there. Yeah. So that's the only thing I've had fail. Milwaukee, I've had a vacuum fail, a nailer fail. Um, that compressor right there. Where is it? Right there. Fails. That one's actually broken. I have got two. I didn't realize I even had two of those things. So... That's another reason why you want to do inventory. But uh, yeah, highly recommend Makita and Milwaukee. But you know, once you're using tools on a daily basis, they do fail. All right, going back to the Polk station real quick. Yes, had my table saw stolen this year with a couple of batteries. So this is brand new. I haven't actually even used it yet. But uh, highly recommend the M18 table saw. Wish it was a 10 inch. I know Flex is coming out with a 10 inch table saw, but I'm not I'm not getting to another battery line. Not, not even close. So went and got the... Uh, Another new M18 table saw, so nice. See, no cords, battery powered. Everything's nice and neat on it. So, highly recommend this if you guys. I know there's the uh, flex fold as well, but I like using data blades sometimes, so got to use the Milwaukee for sure. Uh, impacts, uh, blower, these go without saying. You can see, oh, oh man, whole hog. Or this is, yeah, this is the whole hog with the super hog. Awesome. I got the quick lock. Man, that eats through two by fours, two, you know, four by six, whatever you need to to get through hole, make holes in wood. Awesome. Period. Highly recommend. Don't even don't even think about not having it. It's it's awesome. I know that your drills, I got plenty of drills here, but the drills are great. But man, that thing just makes mincemeat of uh, whatever you need to when you're running, you know, Romex or wet at piping for plumbing, whatever you need to. So I do have some M12 impacts. Surge, and then we got the regular Gen 3, or I think it's a Gen 3 right there too. And then, I, you know, I got my awesome uh, Terminator. Well, I, I ran this over and kind of drug it for a little bit. So, but still works great, keeping it around. Impacts are fantastic. I've got, I think, five now. I sold some impacts because I don't need eight or 10, but I do have the DeWalt, I do have the M12s, and I do have a couple Gen 4s too for uh, Milwaukee M18s. Track saw. This goes without saying, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm never not going to have a track saw. You shouldn't either. Track saws are fantastic. I literally used it yesterday on a job site. I'm going to go back tomorrow, use it for a job site, but you need it, period. Uh, that's just making, I mean, we're doing some subfloor stuff. Yeah. 
I get it. You can use a circular saw and probably do the same thing, but it's just so much easier and it just saves so much time, period. I've got a seven and a quarter uh, worm, you know, rear handle, blade left uh, XGT as well. This one's the beam saw. I want you to call it like this is the beam saw. This one's great. I can cut four by material, so it cuts up to three points. I forget how many inches, but I can cut four by material here in America with this. That's why I bought it, period. It's great. 100% just... If I need to get through a two by four, one pass, that's the tool I'm grabbing, period. Router goes without saying. You need a router. If you're a woodworker or anything, you're going to have to have a router. I have one. Jig. I mean, mostly I use for, you know, routering outdoor, you know, stuff like that. Just your punchless kind of work, period. So that's basically it. On this side, you guys can see the Pollock station still, you know, still working, still using it. You got plenty of storage here. Build yourself one. And of course, tape measures. I don't, I almost forgot about tape measures. I think I got, like, I think I have 20, maybe, tw maybe even over 20 of those things. So they're around here somewhere. What can I say? Uh, we're going to go back over here. Of course, we got the air compressor. This one broke. I got to send it back. We've got the pump. Pump I used a couple of times, but, you know, like, it's one of those tools, like, if you need a pump, an air compressor is not going to do the job. A saw is not going to do the job. You need a pump. So this thing, I think I, I, I ragged it out. It's pretty, it's, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been put through the ringer for sure. So I'll see if I have a battery in there. But uh, still works. Awesome. Highly recommend, period. Just M18, you need to pump some stuff out, just make it happen, period. We've got, uh, let's see here, selfie stick here. Uh, la of course, ladders and stuff. This goes without saying, you know, hand tools, all this kind of stuff. Stabila, I'm missing a Stabila uh, digital four footer. I gotta find where that's at, cause I can see here. I got a six footer, I've got eight footer. Uh, I've got some other ones too, smaller ones as well. But you know, this is just for, as a example, but hand tools. Yep, Vita Pro Packs. I mean, you can see here. I do like the Franklin sensors. These are fantastic. These actually work pretty good as being a stud finder. So, um, other than that, you guys, I do have my Clover card reader. That's uh, obviously taking money from customers as far as when they want to pay with a credit card. Absolutely outstanding. And, you know, squares. So, that is basically what I've got for the tools for this year. I do have all these, you know, there's other things here you guys can see. I've got cable caddies over here. We've got all inventory. Like I'm just, you know, we got plenty of stuff over here as well, but those are the main tools as far as power tools that I've been trying to, you know, we use on a daily, weekly basis. And I just want to make sure everything's in working order, missing some stuff. Now I gotta go find it, find out who has it and get it back so we can keep working. Uh, it does suck buying tools over again because somebody steals them and, but it is what it is. <sighs> what are you going to do? Right? So like and subscribe, you guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the new year. I think this video is going to come out probably the week prior or the week of the last week of December. So, yeah, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. I appreciate all the support.